Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers Nork, Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexis Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health related questions. We're here for you. We're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexis Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers North. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everybody, I am Teresa Pereira. So we are going to work with oil pastels today. All right, well, oil pastels, I have to be honest, are one of my favorite mediums. Oil paint and oil pastels, I don't know why, I love them. They're very forgiving. And I tell my, I teach high school. And when I tell them that they give me like weird looks cause like how can oil pastels be forgiving? Um, they forgive each other. Uh, they like covering each other. Oil pastels love to play with each other. They mix, they blend, they're creamy, especially if you have good oil pastels. Um, I'm not sure which ones you have. I see they have points. Um, your points will be worn down pretty quickly if you use oil pastel quickly because you're grinding your oil pastel into the paper. Um, we were talking briefly when we first started about the tooth of paper. I will just show you quickly um, how I have it set up and I'm gonna try to make it so that you can see both. Um, the paper's tooth, Again, that's another weird term, right? Because it's art and talk about tooth. It has to do with how it grabs whatever medium you're working with. So that copier paper that you might have will not, it's, if you feel it, you feel a texture on drawing paper. If anybody's ever done watercolor, watercolor paper has lots of texture. It's heavy. You can actually see the undulating surface of watercolor paper. That's meant for watercolor because watercolor curves, curls paper. Oil pastel does not curl paper, but it likes to grab onto paper. So that's why we're using drawing paper. I mean, you will find a difference if you're practicing on doing it on both, and I encourage you to do that. Try the sur different surfaces if you have them. Draw on regular paper, which is this, it's slicker. And then if you do the same thing, I'm not gonna do it on this oil pastel paper, on this uh, drawing paper, it feels you know, rougher. It has more texture because it's grabbing onto it. And that's what we refer to as tooth. Okay, so because you don't need pencils, because you're drawing with oil pastel, um, I tend to use colors that are neutral when I draw. And I tend to tell students, don't worry about making mistakes. People like to use pencil because they like to erase their mistakes. Don't worry about that with this because we're gonna cover your mistakes when you draw. And I don't call them mistakes, I call them sketches. You're sketching, you're studying, just like when you do a math problem, and forgive me for using school terms, but we carry these with us all our lives. When you show your work in math, sketching is showing your work. I like to see sketching. I like to see the looking at something and drawing one line. Oh, that's not the line, drawing it again. So you're drawing lightly. Um, the other thing that I talk about is holding a pencil or in this case, an oil pastel when we write, although who writes with oil pastel? But it's the same way you're holding, when you're holding a pencil, when you write, it's different from when you hold a pencil, when you sketch. You kind of sort of, you know, when you drink a cup of tea, you put your pinky up, same kind of thing with a pencil, you let it float. So we kind of do that, even though it's a shorter, nubbier pencil, we hold the oil pastel like we're letting it float on the paper. And that's how we draw. Um, let me see if you have a light blue, that's my go-to for drawing with oil pastel. 
a light blue. If I'm doing something that's like a fall leaf or orangey sunset, then I'll use yellow to sketch. It's your choice. You can use yellow if you're worried about making pressing too hard or the go-to is light blue. I'm gonna be drawing with a darker blue so you could see the lines. Um, so at this point, we're gonna talk about the fall landscape. I'm gonna turn this so that you can see as well as possible. Um, so here we have the blue sky and we have this kind of uh, brook stream, not quite river, maybe it's a small tributary, <laughs> whatever it is, it's a body of water that sort of winds around. And then on either side are birch trees with fall the uh, foliage. So how do we draw this? What we start with is the bones of the landscape. So if you squint your eyes at anything, it isolates the bones. So what I start with, I see the shape. And this is the other term that I use a lot. And I use this when I draw, whether it's a landscape, a still life, a person's face, I draw negative and positive space. And if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down, okay? Um, in this case, I'm calling the sky the negative space and the trees the positive space. So if I draw, if I isolate just the negative space, the positive space pops out. It just emerges without you even having to think about it. So that's your first step. Look at how far this foliage kind of goes out. And all we're doing is we're just roughly blocking it in. Everything else we're going to put right on top because oil pastel covers oil pastel. So that's why I'm, I always start, uh, if I'm right-handed. So I start left to right. If you're left-handed, you would do the opposite. It's just because I guess we read this way. It's, that's your choice. But I start here and I'm just gonna block it out. And if you can't see, just tell me also, can you press harder? So um, do you see how I'm like blocking out the shape of the tree? And then there's this little piece of land. If you want to, um, most landscapes have horizon lines. The horizon line is where the land or the water meets the sky. This horizon line, and I love it when that happens, is about right in the middle of the page. So draw yourself a line to show the horizon line. That's where it is. And don't worry about how wide it is. Oh, I made it too wide. Don't worry about it, it'll cover. So that is a good guide to see where this bunch of trees goes out and everything else you can add afterwards. Look to see where this little triangular shape of land juts out and put that in. And again, you're using your now the negative space has become the water. So you're using your spatial kind of, oh, how much, how much does that go up from the bottom of the page? Oh, about there. Okay, so look, here is that piece of land. And it doesn't have to be exact, just rough it in. You're you, uh, doing a landscape or doing any kind of work of art that involves materials that can be layered, you can adjust. And that's why one of the reasons why I love oil pastels, because you can adjust, you can correct. All right, so just like that, this side of the, my little beautiful little, where I wanna be right now, um, side is done. Now, if you want to, you can mark yourself where these trees are. They start about mm, sort of the bottom half of that island and they go up. And then there's another one right there next to it, just to give yourself, okay, that's about where they are. I'll come back to you. All right, now we're gonna tackle this other side. And it's the same process. Look at this negative space. This, by, by negative space, I mean the sky. So all I'm doing is duplicating that negative space for the, just roughly, sorry. Just roughly, and then there's a horizon line. So I'm seeing what comes out over there. Now this side has more little jutting pieces of land. So I'm looking at them. And if, I need, if you need me to slow down, just holler out, I'm going too fast, roughly blocking those in. And then it's the same thing about where does this land come out over here? Oh, about there. You see that? Make yourself a little mark. And it comes out like that. It goes in, there's like a little river bank thingy over here, and then it comes out. I mean, we're doing like, this is an impressionistic piece. So if you know Monet and Manet, how they painted, they painted using light and color. That's what we're doing. Um, and the same thing here with the trees, either you can put them in now just to give yourself an indication of where trees are, but we're covering a lot of it. So it's not crucial, but some people like to say, oh, I'm gonna put a tree here. So mark yourself a little tree. There's another one. It's like a triple tree thing over there. Okay. 
So this that I just did, I'll close, make a close up so you can see. That's the bones of your, that's the skeleton of your painting, drawing, your oil pastel drawing. Now we start layering. <clears throat> um, oil pastel is all about blending. That's in my white. Okay, so because you have a darker blue, just I'm just gonna, here, I'll get close so you can see how I'm doing it. You're going to do the sky first. And if you see parts of the trees here are on top of sky. So I'm gonna lightly color past this. And how I'm doing it is I'm just like letting my, um, this is a darker blue, which is why I'm doing it like this. I'm letting my oil pastel skim the surface. Um, I don't wanna grind this color in. Oil pastel is all about pushing the color in, telling it it's who's boss. Not this, because I'm gonna do that with the white. I just wanna have that under color so I can mix it with the white. And I'm going, I'm overlapping into where I put the trees because really that stuff, I'm pushing color on, on top of the sky. So this is what you're gonna do with the white. If you have color pencil, you could be a little bit more aggressive with how you color, press harder. And especially if you have that light blue, um, it's a little harder to mix color pencil, which is why usually color pencil sets have more color choices. Um, oil pastel sets can too, but you can do a lot more with fewer oil pastel colors than you can do with color pencil colors, okay? So that's basically, you know, I've done the sky. Make sure your horizon line is straight. <laughs> um, all right, so that's the under color. And then you're gonna take your white and here's a trick, a, a key with white. If anybody loves using oil pastels and they're gonna buy your own kit, you're gonna always need more white than the kit comes with because white is a great blending tool. It's the first one that's always used up. So now you take your white and now you kind of, if you guys, if anybody cooks or bakes, um, I always compare this to kind of whisking. <clears throat> you're, whisk, you're kind of going in a roundabout motion so you can blend in that blue. We're not gonna get quite that same blue because you don't have the, um, the blue color, but that's okay. It's still a sky and it's still a sky blue. So as you can see that blue underneath now is being completely mixed in because the white is, you know, catching the little particles on the surface of the paper and it's blending. And this is one of the reasons why I love oil pastel. So go right into it, overlap. Don't worry about, oh, I have to put leaves there. Yeah, you'll put them there, don't worry. Uh, it'll go right on top. Kind of go, you know, it's always better to go in a little bit more than to have, because with oil pastel, you cover everything. Even when you have white, there's no paper showing, which is the opposite of watercolor. I don't know if anybody's ever done watercolor. The best way to get white with watercolor is leave the paper unpainted, which my students really get annoyed at. They want to use white, but, um, so you're just gonna like whip up your white on this whole sky. And you'll find you have to, peel. If, if you have, most people have the paper, you'll have to peel it and don't feel that you're doing something wrong. If you're using too much that, you know, these get worn to a, a nub often. Sometimes you go through two whites, um, but just peel off that white paper. Um, so is this similar to the color you guys are mixing? I'm not really sure what color blue you have. As long as it's blue, you're good to go. And um, we want to get a pretty seamless, no lines, kind of. You want this, the more you blend, the less you get with that texture, because um, that sky is pretty, you know, clear. Um, if you wanted to, there's absolutely no reason. I encourage people to do their individual little things that they want. If you want to put clouds, for instance, I'll show you how to do a cloud. If you have this blue, say you want to put a cloud over there. Say like Bob Ross, a happy little cloud. Draw yourself and, and your hand has to be a cloud. Don't, don't make like a cotton ball cloud. You're kind of doing, clouds are, are, um, are, are, are misty water droplets. That's what they are. So um, they don't have like these defined edges. They're kind of wispy. So I always kind of do a wispy amorphous. You can do one on both sides. I always kind of have them go off the edge. I have one on top that starts off the top, but it's always like these amorphous. Some of them are fluffy and some of them are not. 
So I just outline it with that. And then you take your white. And this is where you use your muscles. I'm feeling it because I've already kind of gone through that quarter inch at the top. Um, and you just push in. You kind of, you're, what, what you're doing here is painting with dry, greasy oil mixed with uh, a pigment, a powder pigment. So the same thing that is used to make chalk pastels, um, they just grind that up, powder it up, mix it with a linseed oil, pour it into molds, and that's how you get oil pastels. So um, a little fact here, um, oil pastels don't dry, just like oil paint doesn't dry, it cures. So, oh. so you know, you, you can, you'll be able to touch this a year from now and it'll still have a little bit of kind of like flexibility. Unlike say water-based paint, they dry, okay. All right, so that's the sky. I put some clouds in where I didn't have it before, but you know what? No, nobody says you have to make everything the same thing. All right, so what's up next? Whenever you do a landscape, you always do, and it's true with um, uh, still life, any composition that you're painting, portrait, it goes back to front. So, um, the, it, what's in the back of everything is the sky. Then what's behind everything here is the water. So that's next. So um, do you want, if you want to use your darker blue to do the water for a little bit of, does anybody, do you guys have a, like an aqua color blue or no? No, we just have one blue. We have two greens. So maybe we could like, you know. Let's do a green. Let's do a green. greenish tint. Yeah. So start with your blue and then we'll make the water slightly greenish. So what you're going to do the same thing. And we're going to put white on top of everything, but we're going to use two colors now. We're going to use the, the blue. And then you can kind of do a hard, nice horizontal stroke here because the water has that ripple effect. This is a calm body of water, so you don't have to do waves, but it has a nice kind of ripply kind of effect. So just make your oil pastel go back and forth following that horizon line. Okay. The green, you have two greens then. Is it like a emerald green and like a forest type green? Would you say like a hunter green? We have like a pale green and then we have a darker hunter green. Okay. All right, let's use the pale green. You can use, we're gonna use a hunter green for the, the dark areas, the reflected areas. So, and, and when I add color is when I, verify my drawing, if that makes sense. I uh, look to see if I've gotten the bones right. So now we're sort of adding the muscles. <laughs> you know, if you look at it as anatomy and then we do the skin, but now I'm just making sure my bones are correct. So when I add water, you can kind of, not, when I add color, I make the adjustments. And you can still, we're still gonna be adjusting on top of that. So I'm assuming you have by pale green, you mean this kind of green? Sort of like that. Yeah. So I'm going to give everybody a minute to catch up here. When the when your first blue layer is on, then we're going to put a green on top of that. And feel free to unmute yourselves if you have any questions. We yes, you're allowed to unmute. We keep everybody. And you're muted. you're allowed to tell me to slow down. <laughs> But everybody's muted so we can hear the instructor, but we welcome, you know, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself. And yes, the green is, is a light green like you were showing. Okay. Okay. All right. So the water, the, I put the first layer of water. And it looks more burnt out than it actually is. I'm actually going to try to, I'm going to draw for the screen instead of for real life, <laughs> because I want you to see what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna put another layer of this blue, just kind of skimming it. And as you do this, you'll see the texture of the paper. And the thing about oil pastel is completely remove the texture and we put the, te the texture we add on to the paper is by oil pastel. All right. So now I'm gonna put this, do the same thing I did, but lighter, because this green, you don't want it to take over. I'm going to put the green and skim that across the top. And 
and everything is sort of a trial and error thing. I have to mix this to make sure it's what I want it to, to be. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding the ingredients to the batter and then I mix the batter. Uh, with baking, you cannot really adjust. I don't know if you guys bake or cook. With, with cooking, you can adjust the seasonings. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the seasoning in and I will adjust them after I mix it up because I have to make sure that the color is what I'm looking for. So that's what this green is. It's, I wanna to try to get that, um, it's a, a kind of like a more of a cerulean blue and since we don't have that, we're gonna mix that. So now back to our wonderful white. I'm gonna stir that or whisk it and see if it's the right color. Um, another thing that I should talk about here, we have like trees or something in the distance. Um, the colors that re recede are the cool colors on the spectrum and also the neutral colors. So blues, greens, lavenders, whites, grays, they recede. So the area here and also things that are in the distance are blurred. Um, if you are interested in putting those little lines of trees there, you're gonna use your blue and sort of just really, with a shaky hand, the shakier you, your hand is and the more nervous you are, the more realistic this is. The harder you press and the more sure, assuredly you draw, um, the less realistic this is. So just kind of like little sticky, kind of spindly, rough. We're gonna cover a lot of this with the stuff that's growing in front and then you kind of blur it out because it's in the distance and it's blurry. So I'm using the white to mix that up. But the indication of it is there. So our eyes recognize those or our brains. Our brains are the ones who tell. Our eyes just give the message to the brain. Then our eyes see that that's, um, our brain sees. Our eyes tell our brain to see that that's trees. Now we're gonna blend this in in the background and we want it to be sort of lightest in the background for the same reason that a lighter things recede and darker things like to be noticed and come forward. So we're keeping in mind this horizon line, making sure it's a little bit blurred because it's in the distance, okay? And then that's how we start. Blend this a little bit more too so your trees don't, um, aren't hard edged, we want that to be soft over there. And then continue down, you've got that horizon line down and then use that same, this is gonna end up looking like water just naturally because there are parts in there that are dark, more blue. There, are, The white is gonna pick up uh, on the areas that have less blue and that just looks more like water. Just to, if you, especially if you do this as a horizontal motion. And then you're gonna cover, um, and there is no cooking term for this. <laughs> You're going whisking back and forth. <laughs> I don't know why I always use cooking. I like to cook and bake, so I always use that when I'm describing painting. And a lot of people do cook and bake. So it kind of makes things easier to understand. And I will show you a close up when I'm done with this. So the wider your tip is over here, the more area you're gonna cover. So it's a good thing. That's about it. So um, I will give every, let me close up on that. Okay. I feel like it's a better view from one further away. Okay. So I will give everybody a minute, minute to catch up with that. And then we'll talk about the next step, which you will need your darker blue and your darker green for. So you said it's like a hunter green. I might have, mine might be darker than yours, we'll see. Okay. 
How's everybody doing? Is everybody sort of at this spot? Okay. So now what's really sort of next is the darker reflection area. And then we'll get to the fun part where we get to do all the, you know, warm colors. <laughs> but, you know, if you do this now, it does save you some work. We go back and add some more detail with that. But um, so I see there are some darker areas here. They're less focused because they're farther away. And then underneath, we're going to start defining these little pieces of land. Okay. And you're going to use your darker color for that. So here, there's like this little cups of, uh, not cops, cops refers to trees. It's like a brush of uh, green grasses there. And I'm just going to do a little line to indicate that there's land there. And then there's, um, it's shadow, but it's in water, but it's still shadow. So I'm just going to kind of lightly skim across the top of it, this, um, this little indication of that land up there. And I'll define this more too as I do that. And it, it, it's a continuation of this, this correcting as I draw. And then over here, I'm just gonna go back and grab my white and I'm gonna correct that. It's not as, it's uh, I'm blending it and correcting it. Just kind of like a little bit of a shine in the water there. I'm gonna put that in there. And then it goes back. Now it starts getting into that green. So hopefully you guys have this same kind of hunter green. If it's not, if it's lighter, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to use green there because it's it's, it's uh, reflecting probably some of the what's in the tree there. And I'm sort of just drawing by impression. You can see blue again. I'm shifting back to my blue. And here it's reflecting that red over there, but I'm going to put that later. And then, so at whatever you see, as you see it, you sort of just put it in. I see some green there, putting that in. You see those two of the reflection of the birch trees I will add later, but I, now I see some dark blue. And then just sort of like let it fall off. It's very basic. And then again, Blend, blend, blend. Use the oil pastel to blend that all together. And then the same thing here. So start defining those little islands, the little pieces of land shapes that come out. And then put the shadow. And I see green there, so I'm going to put switch over to my green. And I see another piece of green here. You see this little piece of land. So now, as as you see, I'm tightening in on the um, my bones. I'm making them more defined, and I'm honing in on those all those details. And then there's like a bluish over there. So go back to your blue and put all that in. And the more you put oil pastel on here the easier it is to actually blend. If you start feeling it feeling slick, I hope everyone's starting to feel that slippery feeling. If it's very cold in your room or the house, it, it doesn't feel as slick. If it was 90 degrees out and you were doing this, it would be sliding all over the place. So temperature is kind of important when you use um, oil pastel. All right, so that's basically the water, okay? Now we can start switching colors and going to, and we're gonna go back to the water. Everything is in layers. Uh, so the trees and everything here, it's fall. So they're orange green. If you feel shy or you don't want to, I don't know what colors you have, you can go back to that green. You should have something that's kind of like a deeper yellow and then maybe a lighter yellow. I kind of always keep these in my hands. And then if you have an orange and a red, you should be good to go. You guys have a brown. If you have a brown, that's kind of helpful to use because it's good with the shadows. If not, these four or five colors are fine. Okay. So now you start drawing right on top of your sky. I'm going to use this gold. And if you have something similar, use that. So here I have a bunch of uh, leaves. I'm drawing right on top. And the way I'm kind of, what happens is if you press hard, it pushes off the color underneath. It works best when you go 
cover a light color with a dark color doesn't work as easily when you cover a dark color with a light color. So we always go light to dark. So now I'm kind of doing this nervous, shaky, roundy kind of whipped kind of scumbled, whatever, whichever one of those adjectives works for you. Uh, that's what you're doing. You're kind of doing it in this squiggly motion because it's tree-like, it's leaf-like. They're little pieces of what we see is little pieces of color. We can't do these individual leaves. So like over here, I'm gonna leave the blue for the sky to show through, okay? And then I do see green there, but I'm gonna still cover with yellow because I'm gonna cover the green after I do the yellow. Just go back over and then draw this piece right on top of the sky. Show the oil pastel who's boss and push it in. You kind of grind it and push it in. A little piece hanging out over there. And then there's some land over, whatever, the background land over there. I'm gonna leave that. Okay. And then you're gonna fill this whole area, even between the trees. You can leave the trees that color, but I'm using that same motion. You can hear it. It sounds nervous. It's ch -ch 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 -ch. it's not ch -ch -ch -ch. it's this scratchy, round, scratchy, squib scribbly feeling. You're scribbling. And you can go, we're going to go back over those uh, birch tree trunks. This is, if you think of it as painting like a room, this is the undercoat. And this accomplishes two things. <laughs> it feels like you've done something when you cover large areas and it gives it a good base to go back with your next color. You can work quickly here, just get the whole thing covered the white that you left open for the trees. If you wanna go further into it, push that oil pastel and make your trees taller. There are two birch trees here, all the way to the edge. It's darker in there anyway, so I'm gonna define those birch trees with darker colors. And then you can use that green because it's there's still some green there growing. So start with that next because that's the next dark color. And the way I put that in, can you see? I'll put it closer. You, you use the, the kind of edges of that oil pastel and you, this is like a painting touch. You kind of push the green in. It's like pointillism. You push it in there, here and there where you see it. I see some up here. I'm pushing it in there. You can even hear it. Not so much drawing as it is tapping that color in. I see some in there. And you know what? Make your if you want more green in your trees, make them more green than they are in the sample. No one will tell you no. And then I see, then you go to the next color up here. I'm just gonna finish that and then move down. I see like an orange and a red, so I'm kind of mixing that in. Dark green I had. There's a kind of area of stubborn dark green leaves over there. I'm going to put that in. And then you can start defining here because you have the darker color. It's the same thing. You kind of just you're doing this in this kind of nervous, delicate way because you're not sure how much you want to add. So instead of just aggressively adding color, do it gradually. It's always best because with anything, including with cooking, it's easier to add than it is to take away. Easy to add more seasonings and to remove it. So same thing here. I'm sort of just touching and seeing if that's what I want. And then if I like it, I'll do some more. I'm back with my orange over here. I also see some red in there. It's like glowing. It's 
this is not an exact kind of, um, we're not doing anything architectural here. We're doing an impression of a fall landscape. I see some red here, putting that in. Tap some, scribble some in. A nice kind of red all along the top of this area here. Nice red over here. But do you see how the oil pastel is actually covering what's underneath it? Not only does it cover it, it adds, adds another layer of color right on it. So it's kind of fun. Um, if you ever want to mix and not add too much color, um, in this case, I would use that yellow I started with. Here, I would use white. Always use a lighter color to mix. Some green here. Just that little area hanging up over there. Um, then I'm gonna just, because I really like this a little, I think they're cattails. So you can use, if you don't have, we have, these are the two greens you have. Let's work with those. Let's put a little, little piece of island over here. And then the to way to do grass, we'll use this too. Push that right into it. If you push it right on there, literally just push it. It, it does, the oil moves off, it spreads away. Um, so use it to the corner if you have the green, the light green. And with, a flick of your wrist, do these little grass motions. And if you have pen, color pencil, this is, <laughs> this is where a color pencil, if you could do, you could actually do a multimedia piece and use color pencil to do that. So I'm just sort of flicking that and I'm going back to dark green and defining those little flicks. You see how that pops out? And then because they're cattails, you can just use the orange, give little tips over there. To show that they're cattails. Right. Let me go back. Continue with your leaves. And you can do this indefinitely, as long as you just feel like, you know, I want to keep adding color. But we're going to move on to this little piece of land here, the trees, and then do the same thing on that side. I see this nice little deep green there. I'm going to add that first, though. So you're gonna go back and here, this is just first, I'm just gonna define this, the shape of these trees here too. It's like a shadow. So first I define it and then the same motion, I'm trying to mix it in, so blending it in. This is a skinnier tree, so if you wanna put that little shape in there. And I'm gonna use other colors to blend that. And when you use this dark yellow on top of this green, it doesn't even really change the green so much as it gives it depth. Okay, and then on top of those, well, let's start with this little island here. And we're just going to fill that in really quickly. And then bring this like this. And then it, this is where you can go right on top of this water and clean up that line, define that island some more. It's not an island, but you know, land. And now you can, this is where you're correcting your bones. Piece of that comes out like this. Push, you're pushing that oil pastel aside and then covering it with another color. And that natural motion already makes it look like it's sitting in the water. And then I want to really quickly fill the rest of this in. This is my undercoat. And most of the, what makes up that little piece of land is grasses. But at this point, because I want to fill this in. I'm going to go ahead and put the um, the birch trees to find them. Go get my other white.
And if you have a light gray, you can go ahead and use it. I'm assuming you don't, because I'm just thinking that you probably, I mean, we put a little blue down, so it'll kind of mix as a light gray. Um, so just now you're just gonna go put, go right, right over that blue and you're gonna define, if you push really hard, it literally moves that oil pastel that's underneath it. It, it moves it to where you want it to go. It moves it out of the way. And it takes the color underneath and it kind of makes it look like you painted it on. So um, it's a neat little thing. You're kind of forcing that oil pastel underneath to get out of the way. And you can go across this whole thing here like that. And then do the same thing on this side. It's a really strong, aggressive stroke I'm doing just to get that white to cover it. Okay. And then birch trees. If you have black, you may use it. You can use a dark brown, but underneath it, the bark is black. So when the white birch trees peel, the black comes out underneath. So I'm just gonna sort of push a little black in there and then in the middle, push it up, something like that. You can do here the opposite on one. You can start one on the edge, have it go longer. It's all random. Kind of one like that. I do try to like not spread them out evenly. It's not a ruler. It's, um, you know, it is randomly done in nature. It's, so you can have two very close to each other. Some areas is nothing at all. And then you can have something up there. And then the same thing on the other side. You could do some, some areas are like streaks where they just come up. Okay. You want them in there. Okay. So the birch tree is basically done. I'm going to go back and correct. This is the other thing about oil pastel. You can erase by drawing in the background, if that makes any sense. So over here, because I don't have a straight edge, I'm going to go back and here use a red. I'm going to straighten up that edge a little bit and then blend it out. Straighten up this edge a little bit and then blend it out. To find that edge, blend it out. Um, Green and red makes brown. So if you don't have brown, this is a good way to get it. Just mix your green and white on top of your red. Green and orange also makes brown, a different kind of brown. So I'm straightening out this edge, cleaning up my, I'm erasing my birch tree where I made a mistake and with the background, I'm filling it in. Okay. It's, and I always keep pastels like in one hand so I can grab them as I need them. That's just my own way to do it. Feel free to have them sitting next to you, especially if you're working horizontally. Okay. And then always blend it out. Just never, don't ever just leave a hard line. You kind of pull it, get that color and pull it in and blend it out. Okay. All right, so now I can start doing those cool grasses that are growing there and I'm going to start with the dark grasses back there. And it's the same thing I did here. It's kind of a stroke like that. And then continue like that. I see some red in there. Okay. And then here, bigger kind of blotchier areas of green. Just fill that in roughly. You can even hear it. I'm actually drawing grass. Leave some areas plain. Maybe they're bald or the ground is drier. I'm going to put some more grass. The shorter grass, it's little shorter strokes. Some kind of sticking out of the water a little bit. And here, put them right on top of the trees. Couple of colors. Nothing in nature is just like a solid color. Everything has tones of color in it. So we do that when we paint nature. And there's like little flowers or whatever. They're just 
Mix in the colors. Here too, something is growing that's making this kind of red over there. Some orange grasses, why not? And there's some shine reflection there. You can actually pull the white again to help with that. Make that shiny. Something is making it shiny there. It's a piece of land here that's kind of shiny sticking out. And again, I can keep working on that too. But we'll move to the other side. And if you feel like you want to come back to this, we can. I'm just correcting my land over here because that's, I like this a lot and I don't like how I made it a little stubbier here. So I'm going to just correct that. And I use blue and I'm going to go back and use white and blend that. So it looks more like the water that I have it behind it. And I have that little piece of, we're like creators when we paint. You can, when you draw, you can kind of just make your own, literally make your own kind of world. Okay. And at this point, if you want to put that reflection, because it's reflecting this red over here, it's water, so you don't have to be exact. You're just kind of giving the impression, oh, there's a red over there. Oh, it's from that. And the same thing with these two uh, birch trees. Just give the indication that something is making that reflect. And they don't have to be uh, exact. In fact, you don't want them to be exact. A trick with reflection, you right on top, you kind of make the water make it look like there's ripples. So take some of that dark blue that we started with that's making the shadow and kind of go just over it so you get that ripply look to it. Okay, same thing here, mix your blues and give it that ripple kind of look. And then we're gonna come back to the leaves that are sitting on the water because I'm gonna do a final touch up of that, but we'll come back to that. I just wanna make sure this kind of water is reflected here. Okay, but basically what we did here on this side, we do the same thing on that side, just following that, um, the visual that we see there. So I would just go over the, I mean, it's a good thing to watch the motions and you can duplicate the motion. It's just like this nervous squiggling, leaving some sky visible because that's what trees do. We don't see the sun. So they're not often a solid mass, especially in the fall. There's little spaces that come out. You can draw around these um, trees that we see, but I like to put that on top. I like to draw right on top of the uh, tree, the leaves. It looks more natural. Oh, and another trick. I added the blue here after I put in the sky, because I wanted that to look like the sky was peeking in there. Okay. But you can also leave empty spaces and fill them in later with sky. It's pretty thick here, so I'm putting a thick layer of color. So it's the same thing that I did there. The messier you are, the better. Now let's put some land. See, we put that shadow there, so it's a good indicator on where to put our land. And again, I'm pushing really hard to move that oil pastel from underneath it. this point because I covered that 
I'm going to go ahead and put that line back. But do you see how it covers it? Actually, just digging the color off from underneath it and pushing it out. So this is this way you don't lose track of where I put that tree. And there's three here growing up all together. And here, and there's two skinny ones right there. Okay, I'll go back to the yellow. This is where I'm drawing with negative space. I'm looking at the colors behind my birch trees and filling them in. And then I'll go back and add that nervous texture. those grasses after those stone. All right, so that's my first coat. Same thing that we did here. This start off like this. No, it's like, yeah, this start off like that. So then we go to the second color, which is that light green. Oh, excuse me, that was my cat. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. I'm gonna fill in those areas that I see that are green. Yeah. I see a nice green bushy area there, right on top of the horizon line. I'm gonna pu push that color in. Find these trees a little bit more, the, the trunks of them. Some color. And then I see a little right about here. There's this grassy line over there, so I'm going to fill that in. That's a different color. I'm going to do my next color, which I see is orange. Right here, it's like a piece of land that kind of goes in like this. I'm going to come back to that. I see a nice bright patch of orange right there. Some in here. And then you'll notice that there are leaves in front. I do that at the end, just go back and cover the put leaves that are in the front. I'm not gonna do that yet, um, but just in case you're wondering, when do you do that? I do that at the very end, just like I do touch ups in the water at the very end.
and I'm erasing the white that I did and as I'm erasing it as well I'm doing this drawing on behind it to clean up my edges to find my tree shape drawing the negative space At this point, I will do the black, just like I did there, and then I'll put leaves on top. Not the leaves, I'm sorry, the grass. So my, basically my trees are done. So I always go back and make adjustments. Um, but then the, the grassy front is the same way we did that. Here are also a trick. I feel like my um, water here can be darker just to help me define the edge of this. So I'm actually gonna take the blue, make a nice straight line and then pull it out and define my edge. Same thing here. Help me make that edge flatter and straighter. Okay. 
So this again is drawing with negative space or coloring with negative space, correcting with negative space. Oh, and then if you wanted to put that blue back in the sky behind all those areas, for instance, we used two, I'm gonna put some, we need that blue, we use this one. Some blue splotches in there to show that the sky is peeking through. And then go back with the white, lighten it up. And so put some sky back behind your trees. Grass, real quick here. Kind of drawing with the hard, hard, a vertical grassy uh, texture stroke. Pulling up, pulling up that yellow that I have in there. I'm pulling out my land here because it's sitting horizontally in the water. I'm just going to show that by pulling that out right on top of the water. Put that shadow back underneath there. Putting some light back there. Scumbling this color on. Scumble another layer of color on. I'm really being aggressive. I'm pushing really hard into this paper because I want to get the feeling of a painterly almost effect. All right, then I do the grasses. It's never just one color with me. I always mix colors. I mean, that's what it's like in nature anyway. Grasses up there on those trees, so look at them. Okay. Now the last two things, and I hope I'm not going, what time is it? I didn't even Oh, we're past five. All right, so let's just really quickly finish by putting little dots of um, color. Is everybody with me? <laughs> I get, I lose track of time when I draw or paint. Um, so here, just right on top of the birch trees, add little speckles of color because leaves grow in front, not just in back. So we're gonna make this look natural. I used a red and a, a dark or orange right on front on both sides. Here too, there's a bunch of the stuff growing in front. So add that in, kind of going off the page because in nature, that's what would happen. Here are little specks of red leaves here. 
And then, depending on how much detail you want to put, the, the branches of birch trees are these little like twiggy black things. So take the edge, very corner of your black and pull them up and do a couple of these black, um, you know, branches. Pull around this side, even though I didn't in my sample. And then the water, you're gonna add the, by pushing it, showing the oil pestle who's boss, just like in a horizontal kind of messy way because the leaves are sitting horizontally, put some leaves there, like some splotches of color, of fall foliage. Here too, there's like a little colorful batch of leaves here. I mean, you can be much more random. couple of red ones, why not? Kind of like Monet's water lilies, they're just, there's no kind of real form. Okay. And that is basically your nice full foliage with birch trees. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.